Before the A380, Lockheed Martin had an ideal for a double-checker super transport plane, an insane aircraft designed in 1996 that was bigger than a 747, carried more passengers than an A380, and would have dominated the skies. Lockheed Martin, who had left the commercial aviation division after its L-1011 Trijet design, decided to think of the next logical step in aircraft design. In this video, we're going to discuss 900 passenger superjet, the Lockheed. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Even with TriStar production ending in 1983, the American aerospace firm had been out of the commercial aircraft sector for over a decade with the release of its paper. The idea behind the plane, which was part of a program called Large Subsonic Transport, was to solve the problem of there being limited and increasingly expensive landing spots at airports and cater to rising demand for air travel in places like China, as well as to be the next military aircraft for the U.S. Air Force, which had a lot of fleets approaching retirement age. The report for this would-be jet is now in the hands of NASA. One of the most beloved passenger planes of modern times, the A380, is being phased out by many airlines due to its hefty running costs in this point-to-point -point travel age, as well as due to the fact that COVID-19 has forced many airlines to look at their balance sheets with ruthless eyes. The result? A few airlines, like Emirates and Singapore Airlines, are keeping the A380, which is profitable for them because they run a lot of long-haul flights with a large number of customers, but most are scrapping it in favor of smaller, ultra-fuel-efficient fleets. But did you know the A380 could have been stymied before it even got started? The design that they came up with was this, the Lockheed. It had a takeoff weight of 1.4 million pounds, or 635 metric tons, with four powerful engines. It had a wingspan of 282 feet, or 85 meters, with folding wingtips, much like the Boeing 777X today that brought it down to 211 feet, or 64 meters, the same as a Boeing 747. It would have carried around 900 passengers on board, with 450 splits on each deck in a three-class cabin configuration. The aircraft was impressively wide, so passengers might have found themselves in a cabin around 17 seats across, or 3x4x3x4x3 configurations with four aisles. Today, the maximum that aircraft has is 10 seats across. Lockheed Martin also planned for a cargo version of the aircraft with intermodal containers. These are the same containers that are used on trains, boats, and trucks loaded successfully onto a subsonic aircraft. The plane would have been able to hold 16 of them on the lower deck. The paper adds that a successful VLST must satisfy three key missions. Commercial passenger service with nominal seating capacity at a minimum of 650 passengers, with a range capability of 7,000 to 10,000 miles. Commercial air cargo service for containerized cargo to support global manufacturing of high-value added products. And military airlift with adequate capacity to load current weapon systems with minimal breakdown over global ranges, 7,000 to 10,000 miles, required to reach the operational theater without the need for overseas basis and mid-air refueling. It would have cost eight to $15 billion to develop such an aircraft. This would be closer to 14 to 27 billion in 2021 dollars. The cost per unit was anticipated to be between 200 and 300 million dollars, or 364 to 550 million today. This would have been more than many airlines' annual revenues, as it was improbable that airline and leasing businesses would have been able to fund it internally. The massive aircraft would have been powered by four engines, with the study's authors suggesting three options, the GE90, Rolls-Royce Trent, or PW4000. A successful VLST must therefore meet airline requirements for more passenger and cargo capacity on congested routes into slot-limited airports, and also provide a cost-effective heavy airlift capacity to support the overseas deployment of U.S. military forces. In the design document, the plane only had a range of 3,200 nautical miles, or 5,900 kilometers. This is shockingly small compared to the Boeing 747 with a 7,730 nautical mile range, or 14,320 kilometers, or the Airbus A380, which could fly 8,000 nautical miles, or 15,000 kilometers. Flights between London and New York, a distance of 3,008.39 nautical miles or 5,571 kilometers, would have been possible 
but routes over the Pacific would have to land in Hawaii. This would have made it unpopular for Asian airlines and those in the Middle East, as it could not fly far enough. Lockheed Martin was optimistic, however, and believed that they would have a market for around 280 to 370 aircraft. For comparison, the Airbus A380 only sold 242 units, 38 less than the minimum number predicted for the Lockheed Martin. Each of these aircraft would cost around 200 to 300 million US dollars, which is around half a billion dollars in 2020. For once, an aerospace firm showed hubris, and the report Lockheed Martin admitted it had neither the resources nor the know-how to build the plane. It suggests that it would have to partner with Boeing and Airbus simultaneously to bring it to the market, a total development cost of 18 billion US dollars. In the end, Lockheed Martin noted that its VLSD was technically possible now, but that airline interest had decreased in recent times due to financial difficulties. In analyzing the challenges of building and operating a VLST, hindsight would indicate that Lockheed Martin made the right call not moving forward with such a project. With the Airbus A380 launched in 2005, this behemoth would have likely beaten Airbus to the market in producing a 747 rifle. According to the Lockheed Martin document, LMAS, or Lockheed Martin Aeronautical Systems, was examining the possibility of producing a multi-use commercial passenger, commercial cargo, and military airlifted roughly 50% larger than the current Lockheed C5 and Boeing 747. Looking back, it was probably the right call for Lockheed Martin not to go ahead with the aeroplane. With the A380 now in decline and with the aviation industry going through a small crisis in 2001 and 2020, the designers are probably glad they never went further the document did, however, list several problems with the design. The sheer air vortex of this aircraft would mean that fewer planes could land after them. There would have to be a longer wait time for other planes to land and take off. It would be very noisy. It would require longer and wider runways and taxiways. A very long time would be needed for the aircraft to be boarded, serviced, and unloaded. Plus, new ground support cars would need to be designed and built gates had to be redesigned when the A380 came into service. For this aircraft, entire airports would need to be rebuilt. How to design emergency evacuation for passengers? On a normal plane, you are no more than a few meters from the nearest exit. This aircraft could be 10s meters, with many passengers between you. The systems must also be designed for if two of these aircraft crash into one another, up to 1,600 passengers. Building the structure of the plane itself would be cutting edge. Lockheed was also unsure how it would be controlled in flight. If it landed in the water, it would sink like a stone. A research and development cost of 8 to 15 billion dollars. Lockheed Martin openly admitted that it would take the partnership of several firms to build these aircraft, with them partnering up with either Boeing or Airbus. Lockheed Martin might have been right to do this. Airbus would go ahead to build the A380 and it would never really be that successful beyond its initial orders. And the world of super large aircraft came to a close. Today, point to point travel with ultra efficient aircraft is all the rage and the Lockheed Martin dream has become a vision of a forgotten future. Let us know your opinion in the comments section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.